Hi, I'm Steve, a developer on the Python Tools team at Microsoft, and in this video I'm going to show you our new and improved support for web development that is coming soon in Python Tools for Visual Studio 2.1. When you open the new project dialog, you'll see some entries that weren't there in the past. As well as Django, we now include project templates for Bottle and Flask, as well as an empty web project that can be tailored to whatever framework you're using. Let's create a Flask project. Flask is a very lightweight web framework that focuses on responding to HTTP requests. Templating engines, databases and object models are not dictated by Flask, allowing you to choose whichever suits your application. Our template starts with a single route and some boilerplate code to help you develop your app within PTVS and eventually deploy it to Windows Azure. You'll notice a green squiggle under Flask on the import statement. This is letting you know that we couldn't find the module and you won't see any IntelliSense. In this case, it's because we haven't installed Flask. So let's do that. First, we'll create a virtual environment. Since we are eventually going to deploy this to a Windows Azure website, a virtual environment is the best way to make sure that the site will have all the libraries we need. Our templates include a project command to install or upgrade the latest version of the framework. Or, if you need a specific version, you can use the install Python package dialog. Once the completion database has refreshed, we can continue working and we'll see that we now have completions for Flask and the squiggle has disappeared. At this point, we can hit Start or F5 and see our site appear in the browser. Looking at the output in the output window, we see that the browser made a request for a favicon that we didn't fulfill, so let's add one. In Visual Studio, we click on File, New File, and create an icon. It's not the prettiest favicon ever, but it will do. Save it, and we'll put it in our project directory. And now in Solution Explorer, we can use Show All Files, and right-click the icon to include it in our project. This will ensure that it is deployed to our website as content. Now let's create a route to send the icon in response to a request for the favicon. We start with an app.route decorator for favicon.ico. And now we'll use the send file helper to send our icon back as the response. We haven't imported this yet, but the smart tag will automatically add the import statement for it. Now when we run the site, we can see that our new icon is being used for the favicon. To deploy our site to Windows Azure, we'll need to install the latest Windows Azure SDK for .NET for our version of Visual Studio. Once that's done, we'll have access to the publish command on our project. In this dialog, you can import a publish profile, either through your Windows Azure account or downloaded credentials. In the preview stage, we can view the files that will be deployed. Currently, this includes the entire virtual environment, but also has our favicon file and an automatically generated web.config.
when it completes, our site will be opened in the browser, where we can see that both the message and the favicon are shown. Now, those familiar with web servers will recognize that serving a static file through a handler like this is very inefficient. To avoid doing this, we can add a rewrite rule to our web.config file. Using show all files again, we can include the automatically generated web.config into our project. We want to delete this comment to ensure any changes are not lost next time we deploy. And then we'll rewrite favicon ico to the poorly chosen name of our icon. This will also stop processing rules and completely avoid going through our Flask app. Back in app.py, we could delete this route since we no longer need it. The image will be served directly when running on the server. The template for bottle can be used identically to Flask, but what if you want to use a different framework such as Pyramid? If you're starting a new app, you can use the empty web project template. But if you've already got a working site, you can import it from your existing code. Here I select the folder with my project and its virtual environment. Pyramid uses .pt files as templates, so I want to include those. And on the last one, we want to ensure that Detect Virtual Environments is selected and we want a generic web project. Now we have a few project properties to configure. The first is the working directory. We want to run out of my project, not the top level directory. On the web tab, we want to set the whiskey handler to myproject.main, which is a function that will return the whiskey object. This is only used when we deploy to Windows Azure. On the debug tab, we specify how the web server is started when we run and debug. For run, which is control F5, we want to launch pserve script from our virtual environment. And we want to use our production settings. Likewise, for debug, which is plain F5, we also want to launch pserve script, but this time we want to launch it without development settings. Finally, our local port number is hard-coded to 6543, so we'll set that here to make sure we open our browser in the right place. With all of those set, I can now hit start and see my app running locally. I can go and set a breakpoint in the view. And then when I refresh the page, we'll break inside Visual Studio. Finally, I can right click the project, select publish, and using the same process as before, start running my pyramid app on Windows Azure. In this video, I've given a brief overview of the new support for web projects in Python Tools for Visual Studio 2.1. This is of course alongside our existing support for Django. Please try it out, and if you have any feedback or suggestions, come let us know at pytools.codeplex.com.